In this video, I'll be going over the break-even analysis for IB Business Management. The focus on this will be coming from the learning objectives in the syllabus, and my previous video, I looked at the calculations, which is in the table in here. However, today's video, the focus is more on the graphical or the diagram representation of the break-even analysis. Here is the actual diagram with all the necessary components that we could be looking at, and what we'll be doing is creating this diagram based on some information and being able to see that visual representation of the break-even point. In the top right-hand corner, I have the variables that were given in our initial question that I did my calculations for, and now we're gonna take this information to go ahead and create the diagram for the break-even point. Different than what you would get as a student, I actually have grid lines here, where for yourself, you will not have these necessary grid lines. So the number one thing you have to have with you for your exam is a ruler. You need to have your ruler because you wanna make sure that your diagram is to scale. That's one of the most common mistakes that I've seen with students, and in that you will lose a mark if it's incorrect. Another common mistake is to forget to add our labels. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my labels right now for my X and Y axis. So right now on my X axis, I have the quantity. So these are the units that will be sold. And on my Y axis, I have the costs, or it could be the revenue, the sales that we'll have. I'm gonna put this in dollars because that's the units we're using. And I'm also going to put this in thousands because it'll be easier to label later on. Now that I have my labels in, I'm going to focus on getting my scale correct. So the first thing to look at is my x-axis, my quantity, and I look at my projection. And right here, it says we expect to sell 130 bicycles. So somehow on here, I'm going to make this 130. So what I think for me... I'm going to say, you know what, every line, every inch or so is going to be 20. So I'll say 40, uh, 80, let's see, 120, 160. Da, 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 da. Yep, that's correct. Now, you could add more labels. You could, uh, you know, put my 20, 60, 80. That just wastes time, in my opinion. This is good enough. It is properly labeled. So I know for this company will be selling a hundred thirty of bikes so at the end this is going to be our point um, right here so I am going to mark that and we can label that uh, later on so I could put right now the level of demand so we have this here and we'll just say um, level of demand so this is our forecasted level of demand I already know that, so now I say, you know what, this works. I have some room to write in case sales do end up increasing, so I have some wiggle room in my diagram if something further in the question is necessary for that. So now I have my x-axis, but I need to figure out my y-axis. In order to do that, I need to figure out the revenue that I'll earn. So it says here that my sales price per bicycle is 1000 so if I take my bicycle sold times my sales price, I will get my total revenue. So that's just simply 130 times 1,000, which equals 130,000. Now looking at this, I'm gonna say, you know what? I think I can do the exact same setup that I did before. So this will be 40,000, this will be 80,000, this will be 120,000, this will be 160,000. So now I have plenty of room to work in here and I can say, all right, so my 130, my, my total uh, revenue is going to end up around here. So I'm going to get this point, I'm going to note that, and I'm going to say, all right, and I should have my ruler, I do not, but that's be close enough. I know that point, and this actually can continue on just in case we do sell more, but that's my total revenue. I know this point right here, that's gonna be my level of demand, and I can even say, you know what, I recognize that's where I am. So now I have my total revenue. Next, I'm gonna put my fixed costs. 
fixed costs are given to you, it's 42,000. So I can go ahead and add that. So I say, okay, 42,000, it's gonna be close to here and just go straight across. Again, I should be using a ruler, I am not, but I have that. Now I have my fixed costs. Next, we need to figure out our total costs. Our total cost when we sell zero products is gonna be where the fixed costs are. However, we now need to say, well, what happens, what will be our total cost be if we sell the 130? To calculate my total cost, what I need to do is go ahead and recognize what I have for my variable and my fixed costs. So my total cost is gonna equal my 130 bikes times 650 plus my fixed cost of 42,000. So now I know that my total cost equal, let me see, quick calculation, it equals 126,500. So I see, and this is a really hard one because I don't have much room here. It's really close to that level of demand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna calculate my break even point just to make sure I label it appropriately. For my break even point, I see that I have a contribution of 350 and a fixed cost of 42,000. So that's gonna be 42,000 divided by uh, 350, which equals 120. So I know that I need to be here. This is gonna connect for my uh, total cost. And I'm saying before that it's 126,500 here so it's just gonna be right here it's really really close it may even be a bit higher so this is going to then connect to here and it will continue to go up that is my total cost so now i have my bep i can label that and i can show if i want my BEQ, and it's right at 120, that my BEQ. So now I have my general uh, components of the diagram, and I can start to add a few more things if I'd like. So for me, if I want, I can say, you know what, this is where I have a loss, this is where the firm loses money, this is where I have a profit. This is not necessary, but it gives you an idea of where we are. And the other thing that I can recognize is my margin of safety. My margin of safety, we can see, if I'm gonna sell 130, my break-even quantity is 120, my margin of safety is only 10. Not very much, which is shown in the diagram. So my margin of safety is this point right here. So I can go ahead and label that if I want. I've got a lot going on right here, but I could put my margin of safety and show that. So that is this to this is my margin of safety. So now I would say I have my main components for my break-even analysis. I went ahead and double-checked my BEP so I'd show it correctly for an examiner, they're gonna go ahead and look at and make sure, all right, did you label everything? Total revenue, total costs, fixed costs. Did you label these? All right, if you didn't, then that's where you'll lose a mark. Same with our X and our Y axis. And also they'll look at the scale and then make sure that you actually have it correct. So it is at 120.